inexpressibly explosive, scratch at, decidedly implosive, conflicting a neurosis, yellowing, reeking vision of halitosis, elasticity born of an emboldened causticity, durable in nature, preset for the erasure of an emotional set steeped in gravity, and a loss of expressive facility. Why can't you just smile, affix a mask for a little while, choke back the rage in a surge of bile, defile? Bear it all on your shoulders, ignore how it smolders. Why sit down, Charlie Brown? This is the second one. As I sit at the end of the world, two steps to the edge, five steps beyond oblivion, seven steps to the muted glow of a complacent celestial nature, no epiphany in the flourish of trumpets, one moment of elation, three points of doubt, eternity spent cast out across the expanse. Walk away and it collapses. Scattered like so many Legos, sticking and worn from years, no decades of use. Continuing to scrounge through the plastic bone yard, ever searching for that one exactly perfect piece, molded as it was from a profane collection of stamped steel framework, posited into existence through sheer, unadulterated will. Chin up, chum. The conglomerates never intended to settle up. That's the third one. Ever sifting through your fingers, deaf, blind, and dumb, the only sensation you've left. Feel along the walls, trace the contours of innocuous molding as it patchworks beneath your expectant, seeking fingertips. Note the lack of direction, a distinct loss of dimension, space, time, swallowed up in pitch. Throw up the unexpected comfort of a wholly ordinary light switch. Despair at the empty click, click, click. No explosive insight, non-existent contrast, tones of indistinct coming with non-existent values of gray. And then this is the last one I wrote today. Just kind of on that way. Um, dear Madam, we regret to inform you that your letter, postmarked November 24th, arrived in the stead of a pale writer. Though your insistence of infrequent visitation would no doubt fall on death, although compassionate ears, in morbid happenstance, they alight on dead, altogether impartial ears. Though in considerably great health given his age, his master, consideration, sunk abruptly into that late slumber, four days hence, with little sense of satisfaction, nor any distinct provocation, in ever sickening of realization. And in the communion with the merely departed, Cracked, pale lips, left slack in miserable exasperation. Her lady friendship, the mere raised countenance of a long lost relation, swiftly extinguished. Upon exorcism, such a dearth of elation, crushing sober realization, parted through this one act. Neither embittered or emboldened, a vacancy and expanse swallowed whole by the widening gulf within, gripped by an unbearable thirst that was relentless in its insistence for the wellspring of eternity. He turned feverish eyes to the fountain below. Consideration went out the window. Uh, per his wishes, the master's younger brother, his lordship indifference, was left as executor, executor of his last will and testament, to whom it may concern. Call it. 
All right, as seductive and entrancing, as beautiful and mysterious and entrancing, as a bright, shining, full moon, unobstructed and unmolested by blemish or by clouds, is your pure white porcelain skin which traps me, ensnares me, captivates me, and holds me, guaranteeing that I cannot, I will not be able to escape. Not only your snow white skin, but your enticing, seductive, burning crimson hair, which has etched itself onto my mind, which I cannot forget about. I cannot stop thinking about. I cannot get away from that beautiful, majestic, fiery river, which is your hair. Why does your pale skin, unmolested, untouched by the sun, your blazing inferno of hair intoxicate me, seduce me, drive me mad with passion? Why am I drawn to you with your scarlet locks like an insect to the light? Why can I not resist that cream that is your skin? How, can, how have I been trapped by your elegance and your beauty when we've still yet to meet on this side of reality? intoxicating sea of green and oh god your vibrant green eyes call to me draw me to you summon me to your side without remorse and without hesitation and so i go i am entranced by your emerald stare your eyes glisten like precious stones irreplaceable jewels for i cannot help but chase to go after to give everything for when i stare into your mesmerizing eyes all else disappears vanishes and falls by the wayside Nothing else matters. I have no other care in the world, no other thought or worry. When I look straight into your beautiful eyes, drinking them in, every ounce of them, as if I had arrived at a pristine spring in the darkness, the only illumination in the night coming from the majestic green of fireflies. Quickly I find myself all at loss in the viridian sea of your eyes, but that does not bother me in the slightest. As long as I can continue to stare into your eyes, to feel your heartbeat, to hear the quiet sound of your breath and smell your sweet, intoxicating fragrance, then I do not care where we are so long as we are together and I can gaze into your eyes for eternity. Yeah! <laughs> and, uh, the very last one is called, I guess, uh, Lips of a Goddess. And so, your elusive red lips call out to me, cast a spell on me, beckon and Tease me, regardless of how hard I try and look away, pull away to escape your delicious, seductive red lips. Your crimson gates constantly draw me back. I cannot help but follow the sweet, tender music of your voice, nor can I resist the otherworldly taste of your petite and tight and trancing lips. Your voice, like a soothing, tranquilizing waterfall, which washes all else away until there are no others, until there is nothing but you and I. Once you lift that red drawbridge and allow your very soul, your heart, and your mind to flow unobstructed like the very waters of life, once you open the treasure chest to, up to yourself, to your very essence and your being, then I cannot help but love you, to fall in love with you all over again. I cannot help but to be yours. Shit, I don't know if you're <laughs>